Hello and welcome aboard to this episode of the We Are Reading One Piece podcast. This is a podcast dedicated to following the entire story of One Piece from beginning to end, as we focus on one volume each episode. We keep the discussion spoiler-free for new fans of the series, so this is the perfect place to follow along whether you're new to the series or just want to revisit the world of One Piece with us. This week, we will be covering Volume 13, It's All Right, which covers chapters 109 through 117. My name is Joel, and I'll be your host. And joining me today, we have Sean. Hello, this is Sean. And we have Evan. Hello, welcome aboard. All right, so uh, we are going to be picking up where we left off. Uh, so I'll give a little recap from last volume. Uh, the Strat has managed to escape Captain Smoker in Logtown thanks to the help from the mysterious man named Dragon. They finally enter the Grand Line, but the journey is abruptly halted when the Mary is eaten by a giant whale. Inside the whale, they meet a doctor named Crocus who tells them the whale is named Laboon, who was abandoned by another pirate crew 50 years ago. He has been taking care of the whale ever since. Two agents from an organization tried to kill Laboon to take, uh, take back to their village to feed everyone, but they are stopped by Luffy. Luffy promises to come back for the whale after the journey has been completed. He agrees to transport the agents back to their hometown of Whiskey Peak, where they are greeted with cheers and plenty of food. As the crew passes out, the rest of the town plots to cash in on Luffy's bounty. Fortunately, Zoro realized the town was up to something, and he takes it upon himself to protect his crew. So let's uh, hop into the cover story before we move along the main story. So uh, we have Kobe and Hamepo's Chronicles of Toil, Volume 22. We're so useless. <laughs> Kobe and Hamepo gravel to Vice Admiral Garp for causing so much trouble. In a puddle of their own tears. <laughs> so short and sweet. Um, yeah, so there's there's been like quite a bit going on with uh, Kobe and Helmeppo, but you know, luckily they're they're fine. Um, but now they feel bad for causing Garp so much trouble here. All right, let's just uh, move along to chapter 109, A Question of Duty. Zoro has managed to defeat the entire town of bounty hunters. The only ones left standing are Mr. Nine, Mr. Eight, and Miss Wednesday. Not ready to give up, Miss Wednesday summons her secret weapon, Karu, the Ultra Spot Bill. Miss Wednesday mounts Karu, then the duck just sits down. Mr. Nine attempts to best Zoro using his acrobatic techniques, which ends up being his own undoing as he falls off the building. Miss Wednesday uses her enchanting vertigo dance, causing Zoro to become disoriented. As she charges in on Karu, the duck overshoots his target and also falls off the building. Mr. A ambushes Zoro with his saxophone shotgun blast. Zoro dodges and retreats for now. Mr. Nine is back up, catching Zoro by surprise with a steel rope hidden in his metal bat. Miss Wednesday has also captured a sleeping Luffy, threatening to kill uh, Zoro's captain. Now surrounded as Mr. Eight regroups with his colleagues, Zoro throws Mr. Nine into Miss Wednesday, bounces off of Luffy, then slashes Mr. Eight. With all the bounty hunters down, the fight is all over. All right, what'd you guys think of this one here? Too easy for Zoro. <laughs> I lo- I loved all of the um, character like intros and like all of their different quirks, but they're all talk and no <laughs> no walk. So far, bro, quirks isn't too impressive. No, Zoro is just like give me a challenge. It does feel like Zoro is over leveled for Whiskey Peak. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's just like, oh shit, I shouldn't have grinded that hard in Logue Town. Like, got the new gear. Like, man, this is a cakewalk. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Um, I was not here last week, though. So uh, I'm glad to be back. And I wanted to say, to take the opportunity to say that I really do love Mr. Eight's design with his giant mm, hair and his yes. saxophone shotgun. I just, yeah, it's so good, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah we, we talked a little bit about how um he has kind of like uh like a musical element to him it's like how he does like the, like the like a little voice training before he uh he says what something. is what does he say whenever he does that he's like <clears throat> <"Eagoripa." laughs> oh well, that too but yeah <laughs> but he says like Igoripa every time he shoots the gun oh yeah with, uh, with the saxophone yeah yeah I love <laughs> that, that his name uh, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. So, we'll uh, get there goes, like, <laughs> yeah the codename of the codename. 
So we basically get the the wrap up of the fight because the last chapter Zoro was making quick work of um, the whole town. It was basically him versus everybody. And now we kind of get like the boss fight at the end where it's like you have like your actual named agents here. Um, but they're all like pretty incompetent. Uh, so uh, Miss Wednesday like brings in like Karu and then Karu just kind of like doesn't obey the commands, like just runs off the building. <laughs> Mr. Nine's like flipping around, fall off the building. <laughs> so like, is there, you have to like lift a finger. He's like, "What are these guys doing?" Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a br- pretty great physical comedy chapter in a, in a lot of ways. Yeah. It's just like yeah. just how how badly can one organization fuck up? <laughs> <laughs> and well, they sure did. I also like the character design for the villains, and and like they introduce their abilities, which are seemingly pretty cool but then turn out to not be so uh not so honed or so uh practiced yeah so it's kind of like do they just let anybody into broke works like and these <laughs> yeah, are right. like uh the criteria yeah so it's like is this the best that they have to offer um yeah and then like when it seems like um miss wednesday when she does like the vertigo dance it seems like oh maybe now like she's gonna get Zoro, but then like she just kind of misses the opportunity and like Karu just runs past him. <laughs> but even I do, then <laughs> I do question if Karu wasn't seemingly as incompetent or listened to what they said would would they have had better success. But I mean you can say that about <laughs> literally every member of the team. So, like... <laughs> Blaming it all on the ultra spot bill. Who is very emotive. I love the mm. expressions the duck gives. Yeah. I guess it's a duck. Yeah, it's a duck, yeah. <laughs> what is um, he, some kind of toy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, oh, the and then boy, uh, even like has like like the, the shotgun um in his hair. Yeah, his hair. <laughs> they, they come out of the rolls, which is pretty uh pretty crazy um i i love that luffy or or that uh zora says luffy lend me your belly <laughs> <laughs> and then Team the sound work. effect is the sound effect is plump <laughs> when, he, when he lands on him plump and then moosh as he exits the belly <laughs> moosh yeah. Yeah, Luffy's so a little, little full from uh going hard with the feasting yeah <laughs> I'd like to think if Luffy was awake, he would have had no problem with Zoro using him as a temporary trampoline to yeah. like you get you bought it, you get it, buddy. Sure thing. <laughs> gum gum trampoline. <laughs> yeah. So uh any other thoughts on this chapter? It's a fun one. Nothing much more to say. It's just Zoro just absolutely smacking some people around. Like Yeah. Love to see Zoro just hey, kicking some ass. We're 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 coming into the to, to the grand line with a bang here. Yeah. All right, let's uh move along. Uh next part of the cover story. So there's actually a typo. Um it says on the volume, uh, it says it's uh Kobe and Himepo's Chronicles of Toyo volume twenty, but it's actually volume twenty three. Mm. So they actually correct the numbering like on the next one. So it's like, it was just this one that was off for some reason. Huh. But anyway, um, Kobe and Himepo's Chronicles of Toil, volume 23, five seconds before Garp's announcement. Garp is about to make an announcement regarding Kobe and Himepo. So what's he going to say? What's it going to be? Are they in trouble? This this side story is a really slow burn. This, this Yeah, burn. they really are taking their time. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. A lot happens between chapters. <laughs> but yeah, that's uh how it goes sometimes. Yep. All right, moving on to the chapter itself, chapter 110, the night isn't over. Luffy wakes up and is surprised that he's outside. Some stragglers from Baroque Works try to flee as their top officers have been defeated, but they are stopped by the unluckies. Before they attack, the failed agents, Mr. Five and Miss Valentine, arrive, ordering them to halt. As Zoro is ready to relax, Mr. Eight tries to get up as he says he has a special duty. Mr. Five and Miss Valentine find the fallen officers who think their fellow agents have come to help. 
They clarify that they are here on the boss's orders because it came to his attention that their organization has been infiltrated by the members of the Kingdom of Alabasta. Realizing his cover has been blown, Mr. Eight attacks. Miss Wednesday tells her colleague, Mr. Eight, to run, who turns out to actually be Egram from the Royal Guard of Alabasta, here to protect Miss Wednesday, aka Vivi Nefertari, Princess of Alabasta. Mr. Five is ready to finish Vivi off, but Mr. Nine steps in to defend his partner, despite not really knowing what's going on. Mr. Five easily blasts him away using the powers of his Boom Boom Fruit as he flicks his explosive boogers. Out of desperation, Egram begs Zoro to say Princess Vivi. He promises to reward him. Nami arrives and agrees to help for the price of a billion berries. <laughs> All right, so I want to start with Evan on this one. Enter Booger Boy and Wheel Woman. <laughs> <laughs> I still don't get her character design. I don't know what those wheels are supposed to be or what they are. Um, so for Miss Valentine? Yes. Um, oh, okay. Uh, so I think they are supposed to be like lemons. Yeah. I think it's easier to tell with the color. Gotcha. Oh, I can kind of see it on the cover. Yeah, it's a it's a little hard to tell, um, even from there, but like I, right. I think we're going to lemon like, lady. <laughs> yeah, I'll yeah, I, I think I think they're able, like lemons or citrus of some kind. <laughs> um, yeah, I was excited uh, getting some new characters. We get number five. Um, I don't think we've been told the ranking of their names yet, or how their names work. Have we figured that out yet? Yeah, so um, they haven't actually gone into the organization rankings quite yet, but they, they do mention this volume. Um, so uh, essentially, they are like the higher up you go in the numbers, like the higher in the organization you are. So typically, the more powerful you become. So the lower these numbers are, you know, you can presume that they're going to just get stronger from here. But I mean, right now, we haven't really seen anybody too too strong. Um, but maybe uh, Mr. Five and Miss Valentine will change things. Is it that the male members are numbers and the female members are like holidays or something? Or yeah, days? or like days. Yeah. yeah. Um, Explosive yeah, so... boogers, though. That's kind of a fun super. <laughs> As a kid, okay. I got I got some stuff to talk about this guy. <laughs> okay, yeah, Sean, would... you can go ahead. Yeah. As a, as a kid, this guy was like that can't be what his power is. I was like, I was convinced like he must make something out of his nose. They're not actually snot. It's like, Oh my God, it's actually snot. It's actually just like, it's just like, he's got this cool design. He's just like this dude in sunglasses. And he's like, by the way, my power. <laughs> it's like, All right. Sure, dude. Like, and then maybe that's the joke. He's supposed to have this incredibly cool, like, like, appearance but his power is the most just schoolyard nonsense shit in the universe like all right hey sometimes uh you don't know what fruit you're eating until you get I, it i guess hey. so and you gotta I, work with it <laughs> like he couldn't boom, boom, fruit. that sounds fun oh, oh. <laughs> yeah explosive boogers yeah so evan uh what did you think of the reveal of uh, mr eight and miss wednesday um, I mean, they seemed like very formidable opponents. I don't want to get too ahead of myself, but uh, I like their character design a lot. Like Sean was saying, number five looks really cool. Oh, no, I meant like, um, they would find out about uh, how Egram and Vivi are they're not actually like here oh, as part of her. Find out they're imposters. Yeah, so that they they've had ulterior motives for being in the organization, right? And we get a reveal um, that they aren't who they've been representing themselves this whole time. Yeah, I thought he was going to. I thought he was going to like. I thought that he wasn't maybe involved, or they didn't know he was involved, and he like was going to blow his own cover by being like, okay. "Oh my gosh!" Um, but it turns out there are multiple moles in the. <laughs> um, Baroque works. 
But yeah, I thought it was interesting, you know, because you see these guys show up and you expect them to be chasing uh, Luffy and co, but instead they're looking for moles in their own facility and it kind of mm -hmm. like is a little side plot that I wasn't, I didn't see coming. Yeah. I guess it explains their lack of uh, training. <laughs> or, uh, it explains them at least, not everybody else. In, uh, but... Assassin's Guild. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't seem like they're really quite cut out for it, so yeah, that's good. Uh, how about you, Sean? What what did you think of this reveal? I know it's probably been so uh, long for you. It's but... been a, it's been a hot minute, yeah. But um, I I wasn't really. I was like, man, this just seems like a kind of a name drop out of nowhere. So I wasn't fully unaware of exactly what was going on with it. I was just like, I guess this is some backstory that will be revealed in time. But um, hmm. I didn't I didn't realize it was going to go where where it ends up going. Certainly, like it becomes a way bigger deal than. Maybe it would I thought maybe it would be just contained to this little arc, but no, it, it keeps going. <laughs> yeah, so there's there's some seeds being planted here. So yes, certainly. Um, so I think for Evan, like he doesn't quite he, he doesn't see the full picture yet because he doesn't know exactly where the story is leading. But um this is a very important part for the story. Uh because now like Zoro uh, is stuck in a situation where he's gonna have to help this princess. Um, and when we first saw these characters, we didn't know like what their deal was. Now we see that Vivi and uh, Igaram are here because of something to do with their kingdom. Um, <laughs> so I don't want to say too much yet because uh, we are going to we're gonna talk a little bit more this this volume. But uh, I, I was surprised the first time around to see that like they actually had um, an ult, that they, they were not who they said they were this whole time. So I was surprised by this reveal, and I, I think it's a fun one. But we'll we'll see how it plays out. Yeah, we get a lot more nuggets on their backstory in this volume. Uh, I, I also love like. Bill. Uh, what was that? I just I love Mr. Eight's hair so much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just looking at it again here. Yeah, and it's great. just like, oh, immaculate. <laughs> and I like how Nami doesn't skip a beat. Like no as soon as like as soon as money is involved, she is there ready to make a deal. What's that? Money? <laughs> Classic <laughs> Nami. Yeah. We'll do it for a billion berries. Yeah. <laughs> so Nami. <laughs> Uh, but I also kind of feel like the arrival of Mr. Five and Miss Valentine kind of shows how mercenary Broke Works is. Like they're ready to, they're not even, they're not here to like help their own or like members, but they're here to essentially like assassinate them. Yeah. So it's very cutthroat and very much uh, impersonal in that way. So it doesn't matter like, oh yeah, we, we we know like even with the organization or whatever they're like we're we're here because we're going to kill you we're just doing our job that's that's all it is to them right yeah because when they first showed up it was like oh thank god you're here we need help and mm -hmm. like oh no actually we're here to kill you so although mr nine out. to his credit uh he's ready to help his partner so he, yes like, he's kind of going against the organization here so kudos to him even after uh, he hears that about their true identity mm, yeah so yeah that was that was pretty cool uh i do want to note um so i went with nefertari for vivi uh it's one of those things again l and r where sometimes you don't know which one it is but um i think nefertari is probably the more accurate translation so that's that's what i i go by but again it's one of those preference things so if i say nefertari you can say nefertari Either way it works, it's the I'm same thing. I'm, I'm pretty much always just going to call her Vivi. So it probably won't come up for me too much, but yeah. Yeah, just just knowing that there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any other thoughts on this one? It was funny seeing um, Mr. Five's reveal because like, he was just like picking his nose. I'm like, what's this guy doing? Picking his nose. I was like, oh, <laughs> but wait, there's more. He's getting armed. <laughs> He's yeah, he's loading his weapon. <laughs> he's getting ammo. 
All right, let's move along. Chapter 111, The Secret Criminal Organization. Igram is shocked at the high amount Nami is demanding, though Nami makes her demands very clear as they won't help unless they agree to the amount. Igram reluctantly accepts the deal, so Nami orders Zoro to go save the princess. Zoro pushes back, wondering why he has to get involved, but Nami reminds him that he owes her interest from lending the money to buy the swords, even though he gave the money back. Nami agrees to leave Zoro's debt if he helps the princess. As Vivi and Karu try to flee the, bro uh, the Brokeworks agents, Miss Monday steps up to help her. She has no match for Mr. Five. He shoots a booger at Vivi, but Zoro arrives in time to cut the booger in half as it harmlessly explodes off the sides. Thinking Zoro is still after her, Vivi tries to defend herself, but Zoro explains he's here to help her. Nami inquires more about Baroque work with Igaram. He tells her that they are a secret organization whose ultimate goal is to create a utopia under Mr. Zero's vision. The closer an agent's name is to Zero, the more powerful they are. Luffy turns from using the bathroom, is shocked at what he sees. Luffy finds Zoro just as Mr. Five and Miss Valentine are about to fight him. Zoro tells Luffy he doesn't need the help, but Zoro, to, but to Zoro's surprise, Luffy's here to fight him. So a little turn of events there. Oh boy, what the heck's going on? <laughs> <laughs> so like we're just talking about, um, with the organization, they, um, the higher up in the number, well, I guess the lower in uh, number, like the um, the higher up in the organization are, the, the more powerful they are. So the closer to Mister Zero, that means uh, they're higher up in, in the in the tier. Uh, but we also find out that um, the leader is called Mister Zero. That's his code name, and we kind of get an idea of what Broke Works, um, what their intentions are, uh, or at least what they're uh, told. So um, they're trying to create a utopia. Um, so they're trying to reshape the world kind of in, in their vision. Uh, but yeah, any any thoughts on this one? Uh, I love Luffy in the background. Just like if if I or was that? Uh, yeah, it's just like nature calls <laughs> at one point. <laughs> he's just like walking around with his giant giant stomach and he's just like <laughs> almost like I think, go, I, think, yeah. I think he'll go take another yeah. nap it's just, yeah. uh, he just doesn't care he doesn't comprehend he's just <laughs> like all this excitement going on around him he's just kind of like oblivious to it <laughs> yeah it's it's like this little background environment but then and his teeth go full vampire teeth when he's like what the mm -hmm. heck about something yeah so <laughs> Yeah, we get to see more of the boom boom fruit power. Yeah, and Zoro is infuriated that he had to cut one of his boogers in half. <laughs> <laughs> that honestly was such a good shot. The, uh, it's like such a badass cell with like the explosions happening around him, and he's all like amped up. And he's like, I sliced your boogers in two. <laughs> he's so mad that he had to do that, but it's like a very badass. Uh, which i think is so funny yeah it's cool like when he does like the downward stab with a sword when yeah he, when he does cut it very cool yeah that's a cool shot yeah such a badass scene and then it was punctuated with i sliced your boogers <laughs> uh but i love the interaction with nami and zoro how yes. like, nami just kind of treats zoro like um like her almost kind of a bodyguard type person, like somebody mm -hmm. that she can just kind of order around. Like she's kind of the brains of the operation, and Zoro's the muscle. Uh, and Zoro, like, <laughs> Zoro has to like owe her money for the interest, even though he gave it back. Like, yeah. but Nami is like so like, conniving that way. It was like, oh yeah, you just give him the money back, you didn't need it, no problem. It's like, no, you owe me money on top of that. So, yeah, plus interest. <laughs> yeah, the, the interest is what got him. <laughs> Nami being Nami. And it ends with Luffy being pretty heated towards Zoro. Yeah, not what I would have expected here. Pretty heated. Not sure what the the instigating incident is. <laughs> I'm sure Luffy has a good reason, though, right? No doubt. No doubt in my mind. <laughs> I love how Luffy has re remained a sphere through this whole volume so far. A perfect <laughs> rotund sphere. Perfect sphere. <laughs> <laughs> I want an action figure of just this version of him. <laughs> With optional, like, slab of meat to, like, put in his hand. It's also nice to see the other um, mercenary or bounty hunters from Baroque Works uh, sticking up for Vivi. 
Um, yeah. You know, as Yugi's making her escape, you know, there's a lot of um, co-workers, <laughs> I guess, <laughs> stepping in and helping out, you know, like they know that she's not one of the, them, but they still um, want to stick up for her and help her escape. Yeah, it might be like they've had more direct interaction with Vivi and Igaram. Yeah. So for them, it's a more personal thing because they've come to know them for, or at least what they thought. But you know, they they they're doing a somewhat noble thing here. Whereas Mister Five and Miss Valentine are just like they were off doing their own thing, so they come in here like to them they're just numbers or they're just a job. So they'll just strike down anybody that's in their way. Yeah, uh, it's a this weird kind of internal loyalty that's that's admirable, but also like ultimately doesn't seem like it's going to go much, very much farther to their sa sadly for them. But yeah, I mean they're trying, they're trying their best. I'm excited for what's to come. Knowing, uh, like, turning the page and seeing that the next chapter is called Luffy versus Zoro, I'm like, all right, let's do it. <laughs> let's go. I, yeah, we'll get into it. I, I appreciate that Igaram has had this entire conversation with Nami while like not moving from that exact position <laughs> with his face in the ground like this at all. And he's just like, hello, yes, I will now explain to you my entire backstory while my chin is still like three inches into the dirt. Like, um, well, and, I'm probably and I'm bleeding from the scalp. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did you mind uh, wiping my brow for me real quick? Uh, that'll cost. That'll cost you. Like no <laughs> doubt, she would be like, "That's another. That'll be another uh, five hundred berries right there." <laughs> He's like, oh, my "No thanks. I'm all good. Yeah. I'm fine." <laughs> the blood get my eye. It's okay. I can feel it coagulating <laughs> under my chin, but all right, fine, lady. Like... <laughs> all right, let's move on. Kobe and Tamepo's Chronicles of Toil, Volume 24. I'll deal with these two. Carp decides he'll take Kobe and Tamepo back to Navy HQ. Well, slow burn. Slow burn. Must be, uh, <laughs> must be in real trouble. I guess so. Okay, uh, so let's get into the next chapter. Chapter 112, Luffy versus Zoro. Luffy shouts at Zoro for attacking the nice people who fed them. He doesn't want to hear Zoro's excuses, immediately launching an assault on his crewmate. Realizing Luffy won't listen, Zoro fights back. Mr. Five and Miss Valentine try to take advantage of the distraction, deciding to focus on their mission of assassinating Vivi, but Zoro knocks him out of the way when he kicks Luffy into them. Mr. Five says that they keep getting in their way, so since they're trying to kill each other, he offers to do it for them. Outside, Miss Valentine floats up, using her Kilo Kilo fruit to change her weight. Not paying attention to her, Luffy drags an unconscious Mr. Five outside, now back to his regular weight from the exercise. Vivi is shocked to see Mr. Five has been defeated. Miss Valentine tries smashing Zoro by increasing her weight, but she misses when Zoro sidesteps away as he tries to tell Luffy this town is full of bounty hunters. Luffy doesn't believe bad people would feed them like that. The two crew members are evenly matched. Not happy with being ignored, Mr. Five gets up as he and Miss Valentine try to fight back. Annoyed at the interruption to their fight, Luffy and Zoro take them out in one attack. Uh, this chapter was uh, so good. Some good stuff in here. <laughs> so good. I, I love so... the... Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, no, I'm just... I'm so glad that Luffy stays rotund for at least the first half of the fight. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And then a little exercise sure speeds up the digestion. Yeah. <laughs> so they just have like that like little like throwaway line to explain why like he's now yeah. back to normal. Uh, but, this yeah. was such a fun chapter. I thought it was like laugh out loud funny when um what's her name? It's Valentine. Yes, Ms. Valentine is explaining her Kilo Kilo fruit and like launching her attack, and no one's listening. Like Zoro and Luffy are just in the zone. Neither of them are paying attention to her. Like, and, and she even like mentioned, she's like, Aren't you paying attention to me? Like, don't yeah. forget about me. And she's, like, naming her elaborate attack. 
um, which is easily sidestepped by Zoro, just like casually sidesteps it and uh, continues to fight Luffy. I thought that was such a such a fun chapter in the way that um, like Luffy and Zoro are so blind, like so. Uh, uh, What's the word? Just just like they have the blinders on. Oh, they're in the like, zone. Like they can't think about anything else. They're just like, yeah. let's go. <laughs> yeah. So they actually have like real threats attacking them. Yeah. And they're they're just like not not even caring because they don't perceive them like as real threats. They're just so focused on their own uh the quarrel here. Uh, yeah, so, yeah. Two two devil fruit users as well. Like no, yeah. you know, not like a pushover opponent. Uh, and they're just so determined on beating each other that, like, they don't even realize their presence, which is so great. Yeah, Luffy defeats Mr. Five off screen. Like, that's how, like, it's significant. Yeah, it doesn't even was. happen. <laughs> oh, so good. It's like, all right, now we can get to the real fight. <laughs> <laughs> we see him approach uh, number five, burp, and then the next time we see him, he's just dragging number five out by the collar. <laughs> So badass. <laughs> and Zoro even puts uh, the, the bandana on, so you know he's taking it yeah. seriously, too. Extra serious. That was a move. And we, we've had Luffy kind of mention this in the past, how he said that people must be good if they've fed somebody. You know, he, uh, he saw, like, Sanji feeding Gein, so he knew he had mm -hmm. to be a good person. So Luffy logic is, like, people feeding me like means you're, you're a good person. So he came like fathom if like the people that fed him like that like they would be like betraying him like he came like comprehend that. So he, he kind of he just kind of doesn't listen to what Zoro is trying to say. Yeah, I love Zoro's line. Just like I'm busy. Like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and like so just good. Zoro's drawn reactions, like uh, the way like Luffy's yelling at him for. Uh, like, the, like he said, it was like the townspeople welcomed us. They fed us in showers with kindness. He went and chopped them up, and he's just like, "Well, yeah, but." <laughs> <laughs> and then Vivi immediately, "Can he really be that dense?" <laughs> yeah, so I was like, "Like, come on, dude! Like, seriously, put the pieces together." Like, <laughs> uh, this is Valentine's uh, whole attack, where she's like, "Listen to me! I have the power to change my weight." Like. <laughs> I can go from this way to this way, and like, <laughs> I love, I love that. Like, so desperately trying to be like the main villain of this fight, and yeah. just not, just not happening. She had her elevator pitch for this move, and just like couldn't get it out in time. <laughs> like, I spent the whole trip here preparing my <laughs> monologue, and explaining my my moves, <laughs> and it was all for nothing. Yep. Yeah, that chapter was a lot of fun. All right. Uh, any. Uh, other thoughts on this one? Good times. Let's hope this calms down soon, though, before the entire town is destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next part of the cover story. Kobe and Hamepo's Chronicles of Toil, volume 25. Kobe and Hamepo go to Navy headquarters. Kobe and Hamepo travel on Garp's ship to be brought to Navy HQ. Snail's face. Oh, <laughs> burn. Slow burn. <laughs> Slow burn. Uh, the next one's going to be Kobe and Hemapo step off the ship. Step <laughs> that off the ship. <laughs> Kobe and Hemapo put on new uniforms. Still <laughs> on the way. You know? this th these things take time. Kobe and Hemapo stop to tie their shoes. <laughs> uh, yeah, we, we see the trend. Yeah. All right. Chapter 113. It's all right. Vivi is astonished that Luffy and Zora were able to defeat their officer agent so easily. They are ready to finish their fight as Nami intervenes to stop them. Nami scolds them for jeopardizing their opportunity at the Billion Barrier reward. Luffy laughs things off after they explain to him how the town really was after his bounty. Luffy thought Zora was mad that they didn't have the dish he wanted. Vivi thanks them for saving her life, but she explains to them that it wouldn't be possible to grant them a reward for a billion berries. She goes on to explain that her kingdom of Alabasta was once peaceful, but has recently been plagued by rebellions. She found out Baroque Works was stirring up these conflicts, so she decided uh, she decided to infiltrate the organization her herself along with Igaram. Nami is confused as she thought the goal of Baroque Works was to create a utopia. 
but Vivi clarifies that it's a ruse to mask their true intentions of taking over Alabasta. Luffy asks who the leader is, but Vivi says she couldn't possibly reveal the identity of Crocodile, one of the seven warlords of the sea. Oops. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, the lucky witness Vivi slipping the identity of their leader. Nami panics and says she's backing out of the deal since Crocodile has no idea what she looks like. Mr. 13 draws up a very accurate sketch of Nami and Zoro and takes off with Miss Friday. So much for that plan. Luffy and Zoro are eager to face the challenge. Igaram arrives dressed like Miss Wednesday so he can act as a decoy. The plan is for him to take the Eternal Log Post straight to Alabasta so that Luffy and his crew can escort Vivi along with the Grand Line the long way back to Alabasta. Igaram sets off, leaving Vivi in the hands of the Straw Hats. Before he can get far, his ship explodes. Nami tries to comfort Vivi, reassuring her that they'll get her back to Alabasta as Luffy goes to gather Usopp and Sanji so they can make their escape. Oof, so much chapter. happens. I love this chapter. There's so many yeah, gags, a good one. so many good so stuff, much so, many, so much lore and name <laughs> drops and stuff. Yep. Just... Uh, you just told us. <laughs> <laughs> the bird and the otter! Who are they? <laughs> and I love Nabi's reaction, how she like, she stops and just like admires, like, oh, like, nice job. That's very, nice accurate. Job. That's very accurate. And then she comes back like, oh, like... <laughs> <laughs> so much for that well never mind <laughs> I also yeah, love no, that no. Um, the okay. epic battle of Zoro and Luffy to the death and the winner is Nami, Nami yeah. <laughs> double <laughs> double punch Nami um, I love Nami's role in this fight like her stepping in and just being like knock it off like I feel like it's classic Nami well, again, she her concern was that they were going to ruin their chance of getting the reward. So she was right. still think, thinking about the money. She was like, why are you guys fighting? She's like, stop. You guys are going to ruin the good thing we have going here. Mm. I loved that when she stepped in. That was great. Yeah. Uh, I just want to point out, um, I think it's it's interesting to compare how Luffy uh, like believed Nami and gave Nami the benefit of the doubt during the Arlong Park arc. And, you know, even though Nami, like, like uh, basically, he, he was told that Nami tried to kill Usopp. Like, he didn't believe it and gave Nami, you know, the, the benefit of the doubt. And here, Zoro, like, gets a different treatment from Luffy, uh, where Luffy is just straight up going to beat him up and not letting Zoro try to explain things. We're giving, like, Zoro, like, not thinking Zoro would have had a good reason for doing this. I get He makes yeah. up his own excuse. For it. you know he kind of has his, his own he makes up a reason that Zoro like would have done this and like for him that was enough to justify like fighting Zoro but it's funny because the reason that he gave was Zoro made a good point he's like that's the reason that you would come up with not yeah. something I would come up with because it was like they didn't have the dish that you wanted to eat or something like that yeah it was something super <laughs> random and something that's to- that Luffy would totally say right so I thought that was kind of funny that he kind of like um Imposed his own beliefs onto, onto yeah. Zoro there. Yeah, he filled in the gaps like very incorrectly. But I just think it's an interesting comparison how he reacted very differently to Zoro, also one of his crew members, compared to Nami, who arguably gave a lot more like cause for him to not trust her. Mm-hmm. Like so Zoro's guess... been very loyal to Luffy this whole point this whole time, you know. I uh, at the risk of playing, I don't know, Navy's advocate here. Um, <laughs> like, no, by uh, all means, go for it. Uh, I guess the only argument, I, I largely agree with you, for what it's worth, but I've also, I guess Luffy didn't see uh, Usopp being stabbed. He just heard about mm-hmm. it versus he saw all the villagers just slashed up. So the aftermath. Um, so I suppose there's a bit more. But yeah, it is kind of just like, I don't know. Yeah, he just kind of like, well, he woke he up be a bit biased. and then asked the witnesses what happened. And they were all like, yeah, this guy with a sword came out of nowhere and, like, attacked all of us. He didn't know that he was talking to a bunch of bounty hunters. Like, yeah, he thought he was talking to a bunch of people that, had, like, Joel said, had just fed him and gained his trust. Yeah. So. Yeah, I just want to point that out. Not saying it's this is, like, wrong or anything like that. Um, like, in Luffy's mind, it, it all made sense to him. Um, and like the bounty hunters could have been like, well, they probably just said like 
you know, the very basic details of Luffy again filled in the blanks. So yeah, he he didn't have the full story. So Luffy already had like his own like idea that like the bounty hunters were not actually bounty hunters that they were um that they were just regular people but then Zoro does mention that they were bounty hunters and he kind of just like shuts them down so yeah again uh, i know luffy's anger kind of got the better of him in this case um and again not not expecting luffy to be like a saint like <laughs> luffy is by all means not, like a perfect person doesn't always have a perfect logic i just think um yeah, i just wanted to point out that we see a very very different reaction to Zoro, that, that was I agree. Like Nami. Yeah. It is. It is a little, a little off-putting. It was extreme to the extent where he wouldn't hear out Zoro's side of things. Yeah, like, he was so amped up that he attacked first and was like, "I don't want to hear it," and just like right. went. I <laughs> think it's like it's it's an after effect of just being incredibly full. He just gets a little trout, <laughs> yeah. trouty when he's super full or something like. I don't know. Yeah, uh, there's a lot of interesting things that uh, are mentioned in this chapter. Um, did you guys want to go over anything else here? Crocodile is a cool much. name. Mm. But the second I've said that now, I know two anthropomorphic dressed animals are going to put out a hit on me or something. Like. <laughs> <laughs> the unluckies. Yeah, so we uh, we're we get the name drop for another member of the seven warlords. So we now know of three, three of the seven. Spooky. So only seen one though. Mm. Wait, so who do we know? We know Mihawk. Mihawk was Arlong. Arlong. No, Arlong knew Uh, Jinbei. What was it? Yeah, uh, Jim Bay, the, the fish man. Jim Bay, Mihawk, and Mr. Crocodile. Sir yeah. Crocodile. Sir Crocodile. AKA Mr. Zero. Right. Uh, we also are introduced to the concept of the eternal log pose. Mm. So, okay. um, the way that the log poses have worked so far is that they have to kind of calibrate to the next island. So, you have to kind of wait a little bit for the. Um, for the GPS to figure out like the satellites where they go, <laughs> in, in one piece it's the magnetic fields. But uh, the eternal log poses are set to one specific destination. So no matter where you are, it always leads back to the same destination. So that way you have to go through every single island of the Grand Line every time you try to go somewhere. It's basically going to be a shortcut. You can just take this this route directly to this island. Yeah, that was a cool tidbit. Although I don't know what you'd be getting into with the the direct route might not be the best route. <laughs> <laughs> Which, um, yeah, we've seen with uh, Igaram, unfortunately, met a pretty rough end here. Um, yeah, that was sad. Poor hair man. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, <laughs> I, I love his disguise. He's like... <laughs> And then Luffy's like, you look really good, mister. He said it a couple times, too. <laughs> he made it very clear that he was a fan <laughs> of the new look. Yeah. Um, yeah, so he even has, like, the outfit he draws on. <laughs> and he does his hair. But even his hair still has, like, the curls, like, at the back. Yep. Oh, I love the moment when Nami's like, well, they haven't seen my face, so I'm in the clear. And then the little <laughs> otter <laughs> literally does three very accurate drawings of, of Nami, Luffy, and Zoro. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that was such a funny moment. She claps and laughs. <laughs> yeah. She's like, wow, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> Credit to Vivi for offering half a billion berries to Nami. Like, I got about 500,000 Sarah saved up. Like, yeah. Um, but yeah, we also find out that Crocodile had a bounty of 80 million berries before um, you know, he gained the uh, amnesty by joining the seven warlords. So that's that's the highest bounty we've seen so far. I was gonna say that's gotta be the highest we've seen. I liked that guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> of course, Usopp and Sanji are still asleep. Yeah. <laughs> Not for long, but... <laughs> yeah. Time to wake up, everybody. Let's go. Uh, come on. I-, I do like how Nami also starts to show like a little um, sympathy for, for Vivi here. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, because she... Up to this point, she's only been thinking about the money, but now she's seeing like Vivi's like her. She just lost like, you know, somebody who was close to her, and yeah, you know, she she kind of recognizes that, and she's like trying to reassure her. And so she kind of changes her tune a little bit here. So you know, kudos to Nami here. Yeah, that was a heartwarming moment. Yeah. Even a thief can grow a heart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there are moments. <laughs> Any other thoughts on this one before we move on? Poor Iram, time for vengeance. Yeah, yeah. We hardly knew ye. Poor Iram. Uh, I also wanted to just mention uh, in the SBS here, um, there was a few panels that were cut out. Nothing crazy, but uh, Usopp had gotten new goggles. So he got these sniper goggles. So we'll actually see him have these, um, but it's some it's something it's a, a small detail that like you might not notice, but it's just like, kind of like interesting to see that he uh, he got these during lockdown. I think the anime actually has this in the, like the filler episodes. I think they actually put this part in there too. They had like a little bit more with lockdown and uh, more with, like Sanji and stuff. They had like other things, um, oh. but yeah, that was the cool SBS. Mm. And I wish it was in the in the manga because that that's a cool little scene. Yeah. And it is it was like an outfit change for him, you know. Yeah. Like, yeah. So it just kind of happens like off screen in the. Actual he really of- he really likes them because they flip up and down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's funny. Hey, he, he, uh, I like these goggles. <laughs> he also asks, uh, "Do you have any raw eggs?" <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And then uh, they say, uh, try a supermarket. <laughs> <laughs> Worth a try. Yeah. The supermarket. Because then we do see him like, actually in the in the, um, in the the manga looking at the eggs. So that, that's a funny little uh, callback there. Stuff. Okay, let's move on. Kobe and Timepolis Chronicles of Toil, Volume 26. Chores, chores, and more chores at Navy headquarters. Slow burn. <laughs> Kobe and Hamepo are back on duty as Star Boys at their new post. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, easy enough. Easy Chapter enough. 114 The Course. The Straw Hats regroup at the Mary. Luffy asks Vivi how many agents will be sent after them. Phoebe says they have up to 2,000 agents, and they will probably send as many as they need to in order to protect their leader's identity. As they're about to leave Whiskey Peak, a mysterious woman appears on their ship. She tells Vivi she mockingly uh, tells her that she met her friend Mr. Eight earlier. Vivi recognizes the woman as Miss All Sunday, the Vice President and Supreme Commander of Baroque Works, as well as Mr. Zero's partner. She was the only one who knew their leader's identity, so Vivi had followed her and found out. Miss All Sunday reveals that she actually intentionally let Vivi follow her and continues to mock her. Usopp and Sanji prepare to attack the woman, but she uses her mysterious devil fruit powers to knock them over. She uses her powers to take Luffy's hat, which makes him angry. She tells him that their situation is unfortunate and it gets worse as their next destination is Little Garden. Broke Works won't have to lift a finger as the island will take care of them. Miss All Sunday returns Luffy's hat, then gives them an eternal log post set for the island of nothing only one stop away from Alabasta that let them bypass Little Garden. Not even the agents know about this route, so they won't be followed. As the crew tries to decide what her motives are and if this is a trap, Luffy smashes the log post, telling them that she doesn't decide what course they will take. Miss All Sunday says she'll see them again someday and takes her leave on her giant turtle, uh, Bunchi. Vivi is worried she is putting them all in danger, but Luffy is not worried. Next stop, Little Garden. Luffy, god damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Luffy has to do things his way. You and your pride. Uh. 
Yeah, so what what'd you guys think of this one? I love the opening of this chapter when Luffy grabs Usopp by the nose and Sanji by the foot and just drags <laughs> them out. <laughs> Not like, a care, up, like, hey, let's, let's go. Being, just pull them out. <laughs> Is there any way to drag Usopp other than the nose? Like, it's a handle. <laughs> like, it's made for this. <laughs> My he grabs our most off. prized possessions: Usopp's nose and Sanji's leg, <laughs> and just pulls them out of there, like tearing the tearing the walls apart. Just like tears them out. I, I like how Luffy says, "Uh oh, they went back to sleep because he knocked it out from dragging them around." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> uh. And then we get introduced to Miss All Sunday. Yes. So mysterious, shrouded in mystery, and she appears on the boat. And then I love the moment when they all kind of like draw, like Zoro's drawing his sword, Luffy's ready to go, Usopp has his uh slingshot at the ready, mm -hmm. and Sanji pulls out a pistol. <laughs> and then, and not even have the Sanji, he's like, Hey. You know what you're doing, right? <laughs> so I was <just laughs> like, not really. <laughs> that was hilarious. Yeah, and then then he realizes his his mistake when he uh, finds out that she's beautiful. So he's like, "Oh yes. my bad, did not that's mean to all, do that." That's all yeah. it takes. <laughs> Classic Sanji. But then, she, but then she appears to have some sort of telekinetic powers, and she's moving objects without touching them. So. Yeah, so she, well, that not only is she mysterious, her power is mysterious, so we don't know how they work. Seemingly very strong, too, to throw Sanji and, and Usopp to the ground. Yeah. And she takes Luffy's hat, so we know how much that hat means to him, so. Yeah, that was a moment. <laughs> he is not happy. Not, <laughs> to put it lightly. Not happy. I mean, like, I I understand the, the joke of putting it on her hat something but <laughs> on a hat. it just doesn't quite work yeah that I was I, yeah. <laughs> yeah, she, she's just kind of toying with them a little bit but very um, nonchalantly but... and very confidently yeah I mean, you can tell she's powerful just by how like confident and nonchalant she is yeah and she's super high in the organization she's right like mr zero's partner and she gets the title of vice president and supreme commander. So, like, pretty much, like, as high as you can go without might being a crocodile. She might as well right. be second in command. Just, yeah. I think, yeah. So, um, I love Luffy at the end. Uh, wow, it's a turtle. <laughs> uh, it's it's a big one. And like, while, while Vivi is despairing and, like, Nami's still angry at him, he's just like, hey, look, it's a turtle. <laughs> <laughs> never a dull moment with Luffy never a dull moment yeah but I mean we don't know what this woman's intentions were um, so it seems like she she's the one that assassinated Mr. 8 um, and it seems like she's also the one that let Vivi find out who Crocodile's identity is so like what's her game here it seems like she might be trying to help them or wear them into a trap so we don't know what to make of this character right so very mysterious um, and very ambiguous, like why she even shows up here. And she's like, I don't even need to take you guys on because you're going to a little island, little garden, which is yeah. going to finish you off. I don't even need to finish you off. <laughs> and I, mean, I love how little, Nami... Uh, <laughs> uh, go ahead. Little garden. I mean, that's that sounds fine. That sounds pleasant. <laughs> yeah, I'm right? sure it'll that's be cute. fine. Yeah, couldn't possibly. Just gonna, be just scary. gonna wa some water, some flowers, take a stroll through the woods. I'm sure it'll be great. <laughs> but I love how uh, Nami reacts to Luffy smashing the the log pose. It's like, are you crazy? And kicks yeah. him right in the face. <laughs> just gave us an easy route. <laughs> <laughs> then Luffy, um, very much in character, uh, you know, stands his ground and says, "No, like I decide." where we're going we want to go on the avengers route so yeah he's like he's not gonna be manipulated like this so he's going to do what he wants to do for better luffy's the guy that, luffy's the guy that goes to a ski ski thing and he's like what's that the bunny hill i'm taking the triple x super ultra course immediately <laughs> like it's like luffy you've never gone skiing before don't do it <laughs> don't do it <laughs> and then the very end of the chapter um we see like this 
giant tiger and then next to it we see like these giant footprints yep so that's uh that's what we're gonna be uh for a warning yeah so a little ominous ending here yep spooky all right are we uh, ready to move on let's move on Next part of the cover story. Kobe and Hamepo's Chronicles of Toil, Volume 27. No time for sleep. It's train, train, train. Kobe and Hamepo continue to train, even during the nighttime. <laughs> Snail's <laughs> pace. They go no, real hard. I mean, this, though, honestly, it looks like some improvements are being made here. Honestly, like, I mean, holy shit. They're going for it. So, yeah. You know. um, we don't, we, we still don't know much about an inverted, uh, like, sit up. That's impressive. We don't know much yeah. about Garp, but I mean, Kobe's getting fucking freaking swole, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah, look at Kobe. Even took his glasses off. Uh, mm. Yeah, yeah but I mean they're they're at Navy HQ now, so they, they were brought here to to train. So it's not like they're being punished for whatever they, they did before. So Maybe it the seems like were the punishment, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it seems like they they're here to continue the training. They're not like they weren't brought here to like go to prison or something like that or to be tried. Like they. I think Garp saw something in these characters and decided to kind of take them in under his wing. So I think that's what we're kind of seeing hmm. develop here. That's so nice. yeah, they seem yeah. to be uh, making the most of their situation and like, yeah, they, they seem very motivated to be, to be better. Yeah. So, I mean, again, the, the, the cover story, like I was saying, it's going at a slow pace, but again, uh, when you like do it, if you like were to go and read these like one page after another, like it would probably go a little quicker and it would be like, okay, this makes sense. We're going very much step by step, but because like we're reading it between like, you know, chapters and between volumes, it's, it's going to be a little bit slower. Yeah. But it's overall, slow. I mean, we're, I like we're, we're getting a little story. Yeah. We're, we're, it's not meant to be like this grand momentous thing. Like even like the, the buggy cover story was like, there was like some like slower chapters in there. And mm-hmm. like at the end, it kind of picked up a little bit and like, we have like a full picture in hindsight, but like leading up to it's kind of like, like buggies on a raft, like buggies attacked by a crab. Buggies on a raft. <laughs> buggies attacked by a giant bird. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, things like that. Just uh, yeah, just a few comments there. Yeah. No, yeah. it's it's going slow, but I do like what's what's happening. I like the progress yeah. that's being made. Mm, exactly. Me too. Because I love Kobe, and <laughs> I really hope that he becomes like you know a main character again. Yeah, we'll see. Well, he's got he's got to keep training. He's got to keep training. <laughs> Running without glasses. I mean. <laughs> okay, chapter 115, Little Garden of Adventure. Luffy thinks it's going to suddenly start to snow again, but Vivi tells him that the beginning of the Grand Line was so hectic due to the conflicting magnetic fields of the seven various starting islands of the Grand Line at Reverse Mountain. Things should be a little calmer. They shouldn't let the guard down. The crew relaxes, but Vivi is hesitant to join in. After an encounter with a giant dolphin, the Mary makes its arrival at Little Garden. They wonder why it's called the Little Garden when all the plants seem large and overgrown. They start to hear animal sounds from the jungle. A giant lizard bird flies above. They feel a giant rumble. Then a giant tiger seems to have been killed by something. Nami and Usopp decide that it would be safer to wait on the ship and let the log post reset. But Luffy begins to shake. He tells Sanji to pack him a lunchbox. He smells adventure and can no longer contain his excitement. BB decides to tag along, thinking this would be better than brooding around on the ship. As they set off, Zoro decides he'll wander around a bit as well. Sanji tells him to hold on and suggests that he bring back something that they can eat. Zoro insults Sanji, telling him that he'll bring back something Sanji would never be able to kill himself. Not wanting to be outdone by Zoro, he challenges him to a contest to bring back the biggest catch. Nami and Usopp realize that they were left alone without the protection of one of the stronger crewmates. Nami also suddenly remembers why she thinks she's heard of Little Garden in one of her books. Meanwhile, Luffy and Vivi encounter a massive dinosaur. Vivi says that every island on the Grand Line is different, each having its own ecosystem and culture. Due to the climate of this island, it never changed beyond the dinosaur age. Luffy decides to jump onto the giant dinosaur's neck and ride it. Nami has now found the book and remembers why it's called the Little Garden. The plants are small compared to its inhabitants, and it's called the Land of Giants. Oh, 
little <laughs> garden. It all makes sense now. <laughs> Oh, the garden's a little, but the inhabitants aren't. Yeah. <laughs> well, might be a bit more tricky than we thought. Welcome to Little Garden. Little Garden. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, yeah, what, what do you think about this one? Um, I love the opening of this chapter, the, like, happy-go-lucky all is well free like drinks on the you know drinks on the boat like let's have fun um and then seeing you know luffy like so antsy that he's shaking that he has to get all his boys like i smell an adventure yeah. uh pack me a lunchbox yeah which i love yeah. that pirate pirate lunchbox is by yeah. definition a veggie free box no, for quick, quick energy. energy. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've been liking these editor notes. And um, I think this volume in particular had a lot more than usual. Yeah. yeah I've been liking the editor notes. Editor notes have been good. Yeah, yeah so with, with the um, little garden. Yeah, so we see like a, a contrast to how they're trying to start with the Grand Line, like how the weather kept changing like, every two seconds and like they're getting turned mm -hmm. around. So it seemed like it was gonna be impossible to to navigate, and still gonna be pretty tough. But like we can see, yeah, there was an explanation for why it was so like topsy turvy at first was because there there were so many magnetic fields in that area, all like at Reverse Mountain. So it's kind of throwing things out of whack. So things are you know a little bit more stabilized over here. It's reassuring. Yeah, and we get a nice explanation from VV, kind of giving us a little bit more insight with the Grand Line. We're gonna be seeing all different types of islands. So every island is going to be kind of like its own little, um, its own little unique kind of like a ecosystem kind of thing. Yeah, that's cool. That leads to a lot of, I feel like that's, that's exciting to hear because it leads to a lot of uh, cool creative possibilities with feature yeah. islands. A lot of potential. A lot of potential, exactly. Yeah. I love Vivi's like, are they supposed to be doing that? They're all like drinking on the <laughs> deck and <laughs> Naomi's got like a drink in her mouth. Like, mm, you want one? <laughs> it might as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I do, I do love this moment where everyone's on the ship kind of just like relaxing and enjoying themselves and just being yeah. together. And I feel like, um, you know, you've kind of reached the point in the, in the story where, like I think, I think East Blue was a lot of establishing the crew and yeah. like getting the team together and building up everyone's backstories and kind of like, um, just like getting introduced to everyone. Yeah. And then Baroque Works has really been like our first time seeing this crew like functioning together, like as right. a functioning crew of established characters. Um, and I think it's been really enjoyable. I feel like everyone kind of brings something to the table and. For sure. Um, they, there's like different dynamics between different people. We kind of see the rivalry starting between Sanji and Zoro. I mean, it's been it's been happening for a while, but like it, I like that they they keep building upon that. Yeah, it's definitely um, escalating. <laughs> yeah. And Luffy just kind of being aloof the whole time. Like I don't, he just is always like kind of doing his own thing and or like a Luffy. A Luffy. <laughs> He's always a Luffy. <laughs> Um, I love the giant dolphin. Just yeah, it's huge. It's huge. It's <laughs> huge. <laughs> I love how like detailed and like spooky when they're first coming into the the little garden area. The the, the trees are yeah. It's like, chee chee chee. Wap 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 wap. <laughs> <laughs> all the sound effects. It's good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And the crew starts to hear like all like these things and it starts like escalate and it's like. Yeah, to the point where like Luffy like can't contain himself. Love it. Yeah, like we like we talked about like like Luffy's like very like, energetic. He's like, I can't wait, I can't wait, I can't wait. <laughs> and then like yeah, he, he like we see like uh he he's got like um like the big smile on his face when he tells Sanji he needs that lunchbox. So, like he's like he's like shaking like in, like in his spot. Yeah, yeah. And then like he just he's like all right, I'm ready to go. He's just... <laughs> uh, but then Vivi is like, hey, let, let me go too. So I mean, pretty brave of Vivi. I think, yeah, Vivi has shown multiple uh, moments of bravery, you know, yeah. throughout this throughout this volume. 
Um, I also want to point out here, we have another instance where Sanji calls Zoro by his name. Zoro has yet to use Sanji's name. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. He may yeah. never do so. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. So, yeah, just pointing that out. The count is still zero for Zoro using Sanji's name. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> It's so fitting for the rivalry too. Yeah, <laughs> just like the like such Sanji, then the fighting words. <laughs> has Sanji ever acknowledged the fact that Luke, that Zoro has not ever called him by his name? Like, yeah, I don't think so. Uh, yeah, yeah I, don't, I don't think he like actually says it. Yeah, I feel like I also Sanji pointed it out. A hunt. <laughs> yeah, I think if like Sanji pointed it out, it would be like acknowledging Zoro disrespecting him even more. So I, I feel like he doesn't mm-hmm. want to go that far. This might get zero satisfaction. I also truly love the moment where Usopp and uh, Nami are still on the ship and they look at each other and both like have the realization that they're both like totally useless and they're just yeah. waiting on the ship. So, wait, you're not gonna protect me. Wait, neither are you. <laughs> yeah, Usopp says, You're useless, and Nami says, Same to you. Yeah, uh, that was so funny. <laughs> Uh, then Luffy's Ooh. first reaction to seeing the dinosaurs, oh, let me ride it. Yeah. So fitting. <laughs> so fitting. <laughs> yeah, very cool. Oh, uh, yeah, and then at the, the very end, we see that something has found Nami and Usopp. And it scares them. Yeah, I love how Oda's doing that, like, that moment of, like, fear or realization where someone's face is entirely shaded and their eyes are, like, glazed mm-hmm. over. He yeah. does it with Nami at the very end of this chapter. It's a great effect. I really I really like that um, emote or, like, that uh, style. Yeah. It really gets the message across. It's, like, the expressionless fear. It's, like... The moment of realization, like you said, yeah, it's like, like that, that realization where you're just like you have you can't process it, but you're just completely stunned. Yeah, like the sheer terror, yeah, the sheer terror. Kind of over yeah. That, that, that yeah. point in between fight and flight, where you're just like, yes, I'm not exactly. gonna fight, and I'm not gonna, I'm just going to stand here and hope that this is a dream. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like a realization <laughs> moment. Yeah. Yeah, that, I love that. I think that registers and reads really well when he. Yeah, when he for sure, it. I agree, and he does it quite a bit, so I like it. Yeah, very effectively. Yep. Okay, ready to move on? Ready. Kobe and Hamepa's Chronicles of Toil, Volume 28. Day after day, train, train, train. Kobe and Hamepa continue to train as they spar against each other. It's a little intense. (laughs) Is it, though? Yeah, look at them. They're like all beat up. <laughs> yeah, no, it is. They got lumps. It's a lot of lumps. And uh, yeah, look at like the ferocity on like Kobe's face. They have an equal amount of bumps on their heads, so they must be of equal strength. <laughs> Seems yeah, relatively. They have both received yeah. six, sorry, five lumps each. <laughs> Just trading blows, going back and forth. But uh, Helmeppo is going the dual sword route. As yeah, I saw that. So. Mm. We'll see. Maybe he'll one day try the three sword style. <laughs> Start with the two. He, he's seen it up close and personal before, so maybe, <laughs> maybe he'll try it out. All right, let's get into chapter one hundred sixteen. Big. Zoro and Sanji carry out their hunt as they take on large dinosaurs. Usopp and Nami are petrified as they're faced with a giant named Bragi, who asks if they have any ale. Which they tell them that, that they do. Uh, they tell him that they do. A dinosaur bites Bragi in the behind, so he mightily chops its head off, shouting he is the mightiest warrior from Elbaf. He bites the two to feast with him. Luffy is enjoying the sights from atop of the long neck of the dinosaur. Phoebe warns him to be careful, even though this one doesn't eat meat, but Luffy takes a tumble and is gobbled by the creature. Now the giant shows up and chops the dinosaur's head right off, saving Luffy in the process. This one introduces himself to Luffy as Dory, the mightiest warrior from Elbaf. He invites Luffy and Bibi to join him. Back over at Bragi's camp, Usopp and Nami are afraid that they're going to be in themselves. 
Nami musters up the courage to ask the giant how long it will take for the log pose to recalibrate. Bragi tells her one year and to make themselves comfortable. Luffy is getting along with Dory and asks why he's here alone. Dory says back in his village, they live by a code. He goes on to explain that the god of Elbaf will decide who is right in a dispute by the results of a battle. He's on the island currently fighting another giant, but they've been unable to settle their debt even after 100 years. When Vivi questions what the point is after all that time, a volcano erupts, signaling it's time for two giants to battle. Luffy understands that at this point, it's a battle of honor, and the original reason for the fight doesn't matter anymore as the two titans clash. So pretty epic. Oh, so epic. <laughs> the reason we fight is long forgotten. That was yeah. such a cool line. <laughs> While they're in the heat of battle. So cool. Yeah. Yeah. So what'd you guys think of this one? Uh I remember this is a this is a like a personal favorite of mine, these two characters as a kid. I was just like, oh yeah, sure. Two Viking giants. Yep, I'm on yeah. board for this. <laughs> like um and yeah, like the whole idea that we just like, oh, I don't know why we're fighting. It's been so long at this point, and we just keep doing it. Like yeah. <laughs> it's just kind of what they do now um yeah it's just yeah, it's just very a, epic it's a, it's a it's a basic but it's a good concept and um i do love that uh what is like with with uh you have ale we have a little <laughs> <laughs> play dead play dead <laughs> Yeah, so uh, Bragi is what scared uh, Usopp and Nami at the end of the last chapter, that shadowy figure. Mm. But, you know, he seems to be a friendly fellow. Um, but I love when he gets, like, bit in the butt. Like, how at first, like, he's, like, he yells right in their face. So it seems like he's, like, like you know, becoming, like, rageful at them. <laughs> but it's just because he got bit in the butt by the dinosaur. Yeah. So, he, like, he's still, like, friendly and everything. But, like, <laughs> he, he shows, like, he's, uh, he's not one to mess with. And he just cuts the dinosaur's head right off. I love the moment where uh, Luffy jumps on the back of that like brontosaurus looking dinosaur. <laughs> and he's like, ah, oh, it's fine. He doesn't even know I'm up here. And then all of a sudden the dinosaur like flicks him up and eats and swallows him whole. But then the, the dinosaur is beheaded also in that exact moment. Mm. And as Luffy is being swallowed, he pops out <laughs> of the decapitated head of the dinosaur. And uh, good timing so, on Dory's part. <laughs> Like oh, if uh, if Dory missed time that that slash, then uh, Luffy would have been gone there too. Yeah, yeah we wouldn't have even seen it coming. <laughs> the end of One Piece. <laughs> end of One Piece. And I love how both giants introduce themselves as the mightiest warrior of, from Elbaf. Yes. So that they both perceive themselves as the mightiest. Yep. Yeah, this is a great intro for both giants. Also, uh, just a little tidbit here. Uh, Elbaf is Fable, spelled backwards. Oh. Even though they, they, they use a PH. I did not know that. I didn't yeah. think of that. Yeah. <laughs> I think I've also seen it uh, with um, an F at the end, but either way, you know, nice. it would be a yeah. Fable backwards. So. I love the scene um, when. Uh, Luffy is dining with Dory and is literally sitting on top of this giant, like, hunk of dinosaur meat and is just eating away at it. Yeah. It'd be like That's sitting fair. on a car of meat. It'd be like an entire car's worth of meat sitting on top of that car and then slowly eating the car. I have no doubt that he'll finish it in time. Yeah, for yeah. sure. He will finish it and he'll be he'll go back to his sphere form. Exactly. He'll be falling in love with this volume, so... His best yeah, I was trying to see if um, we see the progress of the meat, but I, I think like it looks like it's a little bit more eaten in the next panel, but it's not like super noticeably different. He puts a dent in it though. Big yeah, there's a big dent. Yeah, <laughs> like way more than his own body's weight worth of meat. Uh, but it's funny because uh, Luffy traded his lunchbox for this giant meat. Oh, yeah. so Dory's enjoying the lunchbox. He's like, it's a little small, but it wasn't bad. <laughs> 
Not very yeah. filling, though. <laughs> and Luffy's like, you better like it or I'll fight you. And, <laughs> like, yeah. and you're, you're, I love you, kid. You're great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so they're, they're really hitting it off. They really are. They are jolly giants. Yeah. <laughs> Um, it just, it just, it's just like a very, it's like a simple premise that is like, we, we had like, I mean, compared to the like conspiracy aspects of Baroque works that we were just dealing with and like hmm. secret princesses and secret, it's like, it's two giants in an island, they're fighting and we're just having fun with them. Like, yeah, it's kind of like a refreshing, like, not that I dislike the conspiracy wacky Baroque work stuff, but it was a cool, like, kind of like change of pace after that whole arc kind of to be just like. Where we currently are, at least, is just two giants fighting on an island. So. Yeah, yeah, things were getting um, pretty intense, um, like story wise. It was getting very dramatic, and like you said, um, we we kind of took like a step back, and we uh, we have a change of pace here, um, and new location. So it's like you know very much a spirit of adventure, and you know they're they're laughing, having a good time. Everybody's feasting over here. So. Um, yeah, so it's it's so uh, so far things are going so uh, they're going good. Except it seems like they're going to be here for a year. That's so. a bit of a <laughs> bit of an issue, but you know, <laughs> I mean, it seems like worse places to hang out for a year, I suppose. <laughs> Although we'll uh, see. we see like a pile of human bones that make oh, uh, Nami yeah. and uh, Usopp a little worried uh, that they're going to be the next meal, but it's because like a lot of the humans don't really survive here that long. But I'm sure a lot of them don't really get along with giants as well either. Mm. Yeah, the giants are surpri surprisingly docile to their new guests and even welcome them as guests. They both make the comment of like, ah, we have guests, like let's drink beer and, you know, eat meat. Yeah. I like love that Luffy, um, Luffy just gets it. Like he gets like their, um, like the whole like warrior code and the battle going on between them. Uh, so to him, he finds it like really interesting. Um, like Vivi doesn't really see it. It's also kind of like when like Sanji was like telling Zoro like he didn't get like why he would go fight this guy. It's like he was obviously outmatched, and like you know Luffy decided not to interfere. So like mm -hmm. Luffy kind of respects that, and like you know Zoro understands that. But like Vivi in this case she doesn't get the warrior aspect of this. Yeah, I, I feel like we've talked about that being a strong suit of Luffy, like mm -hmm. seeing other people and being like they need that. Like like these yeah. people need to be doing this, and like I can respect that, and I'm gonna yeah. you know like not try to like intervene or take part in this like i'm just gonna let them do their thing and respect that exactly like he gives people their moments like when his crewmates are fighting or things like that like he won't step in because he knows that if he stepped in zoro would be like get the hell out of here like this is yeah. my fight you know or sanji the same thing you know um yeah i think like a good leader quality a good a good quality of the captain for sure. Agreed. Letting other people have their moment. Hey, uh, any other thoughts before we move on to the last chapter of the volume? All right. The last chapter. Chapter 117, Dory and Bragi. Over on the island of Kukor, Mr. Three enjoys his time off between assignments with his partner, Miss Golden Week. Mr. Three notices Miss Golden Week has been staring at a piece of paper for the past few days. She says it's an assignment from the boss, to which Mr. Three shouts at her for not saying something sooner. He has been informed Mr. Five has been defeated, though he was hoping Mr. Two would be defeated as well, so he can move up the ranks. Back over in the little garden, the two giants are evenly matched. Usopp looks on in amazement, astonished by the battle of two warriors to the death. He wants to be a brave warrior of the sea, just like these two. He hopes that someday he will get the chance to visit Elbaf. The battle ends and yet another draw, and the two laugh. Bragi offers his old friend some ale that the Straw Hats had given him. Back over at Dory's camp, he tells Vivi that it's true the log post would take a year to reset, and most humans die here before it can. He has the log post set to Elbaf, which is what the giants are fighting over. Luffy says it would be no good even if he was able to take it from him. He just wants to go to the next island, not Elbaf. As Dory drinks the ale, it explodes in his stomach. Dory survives, but knows that the ale came from their ship, and Bragi would never resort to a cheap trick. He accuses Luffy of the treachery, so Luffy prepares to fight back against the giant. Oh no! And they were yeah. having such a great friendship, too. Yeah, right? 
to kind of end the volume on a bummer note in the cliffhanger. I think those Giants have just never had an IPA before. <laughs> <laughs> it was just caught them off guard. Just a little too <laughs> hoppy. They couldn't handle it. <laughs> you tell them, Evan. <laughs> <laughs> I also love um, Mr. Three, uh, specifically in this cell when he's like, "Yeah, <laughs> you can never figure out my secret identity." <laughs> as he has a massive three, it's hair piece hairstyle. It is, so how funny. could they ever figure it out? Um, <laughs> I love that. And yeah, I, 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 I'm always a fan of villains that are just like evil. I possess the power of evil. <laughs> it's like, all right, so you're just rolling with it. You're just a bad guy, and you know it. Like, uh, we see like Usopp resonating with yeah. the Vikings in this battle, which totally checks out for his, you know, his treasure. Like at one point, he says, uh, "What was it?" He mentioned something about. Uh, like glory and honor being a treasure. Yeah. 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 That was this chapter. Yeah. Said, I want, I want honor and glory. And I thought that was like a, a great moment for Usopp kind of like almost like seeing these, these two warriors as like his idols and someone, people that he looks up to. And um, he mentions wanting to visit it, visit their Island at some point. And um, I feel like they're kind of like heroes to him. And so that was a cool moment to see you stop kind of like realizing his or seeing seeing like like a manifestation of his goals. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, this is definitely a pivotal chapter for Usopp. Yeah. Um, it really kind of solidifies like, like he gets like an actual vision of like what he wants to be. Like he announced um, like earlier when they were about to enter the Grand Line that his goal was to be a brave warrior of the sea. So he's seeing that in action, and like this is what he had in mind when, like he, when he said that, like what, what I want to be. So yeah, this is like really important for him to see this in action, and he sees like just like the skill, like how evenly matched they are, and they've been doing this for, like a hundred years, and like he's like just completely like blown away by like how, like how skilled they are at fighting each other in this case. And you also see the connection between them because like. They're giving it their all and like fighting to the death, but they're also like, there's a lot of respect there, and they're calling each other mm. brother, and right. you know they're also speaking to each other as if they were close friends. Um, yeah, so it kind of speaks to that like kind of getting to know each other through battle, and yeah, after having battled for so long, they become like old friends. Um, yeah, so I think that's really that was really cool and something of that Usopp really respects. Yeah, they they laugh it off at the end. They like you know share their like ale and like, food and whatever. So like to them, it's not a matter of like I hate you, I want you to die. It's like a it's like at this point, it's just like a battle of honor, and to, they each understand like why they're doing it for them, and it's not like for like animosity or it's, like because like they don't like each other. It's for another reason, right? Yeah, it's just like the respect, the respect there. It's exactly, cool. yeah, it's very respectful. <sighs> um, I wonder who poisoned it. Yeah, I my do. money's my money's. I do Karoo. wonder. <laughs> Karoo? Karoo. Oh, the duck. <laughs> damn duck with his all. Yeah, that, that's uh, some uh, it's a good, good acting on Karoo's, uh and then because like his reaction looks very genuine. <laughs> yeah, no, he's 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 a trained <laughs> actor, duck. <laughs> Uh, I, I love. Like, I don't know. I don't know. Who yeah, it could be. Um, but I do love how Dory. Um, he doesn't think for a second that Broggy would have done something like this. Yeah. So he's like, the only other person it could have been was you guys. So, I know, I know, it couldn't have been Broggy. <laughs> for he's got a point, like to a degree, like because I agree with him that like this just. Out of after a hundred years later, like instead of fighting you honorably in the middle of the island, I'm gonna poison your beer. That's just not yeah. gonna happen. Um, so 
it's a fair assumption to make. Now, would I run right to fight you? I would be like, so we're going to sit down and discuss this. <laughs> and you're going to give me your best case as to why you didn't do this. But, <laughs> well, um, we just discussed so. that like, they're, they're the way of the warrior. So yeah. this is how they sell their, their disputes. And like the God yeah, of Elbaf. Wait, wait, wait. Fair enough. So, yeah. And the God of Elbaf would be like, hey, um, whoever wins this fight was right in this dispute. So you're not, you know what? You got me, Joel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is the discussion. The way of the warrior. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> I just thought of that. Yeah. <laughs> Who could it be though? Who would who would tamper with the beer? Hmm. Like I can't imagine it being any of the actual crew, which leaves yeah. the princess. But why would she tamper with beer for people who are trying to help her out? Yeah, especially the giant. You know, I mess with the giant here. Yeah, no. Although Luffy seems ready to go. Luffy's not intimidated by a giant. Yeah, Luffy was very much right, very much up for the task. <laughs> He was like, "Oh, sorry. All right, let's let's throw let's throw fists. Let's do it." <laughs> All um, right. uh, any closing thoughts before we move on to rankings? I mean, this is a good start and a good twist, and I'm just I am 100 percent on board uh, for this arc. It's it's it, I'm a big fan of it. So, yeah, off to an explosive start. <laughs> All right. Um. So let's get some rankings in here. Um, last week we didn't get Sean's ranking, so I figured we can get some of his thoughts on the last volume, and we can have him rank uh, Logtown and Reverse Mountain. So let's start with that. So just give us like um, a little uh, overview of what you thought of last volume. Uh, Laboon is an absolute Chad. I sent this to <laughs> Joel in our group chat last yesterday when I couldn't make it. And I just. Um, I mean, you don't spend that long hammering your face against the wall, <laughs> like being like, fuck you. <laughs> just, just come back, my big, my good buddy, uh, to and, and not come out as a Chad in my book. So, I, and I love, I love Luffy. Just doesn't he break the, or because the mast is breaking up, broken off, and he just shoves it right in yeah. the way, he just stabs Laboon with it, it's just like... Yeah, he straight up breaks it off the ship. That's yeah. so fucking, oh my god. <laughs> Crocus's flower hair, doesn't yeah. he have like weird, like, plant hair? Or yeah. Something? yeah, exactly, yep. Good stuff. Um... Yeah, no, no it's all good, I, I love, and um, the biggest thing I regret no, yeah, no, I did. Regret. My biggest thing I regret missing for that episode is the, the, the swearing of their like oaths as they walk in. Like, I'm going to be king of the pirates. I'm mm, going to yeah. make a map of the world. Like, um, I love that. That's a, it's a it's an iconic scene. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Like, that's like top ten moments for me. Like, just excellent stuff. Um, I love them being in the calm belt and just like, oh, everything's fine, right? It's, it's, like, yeah, it's an announcement. <laughs> We're all gonna die. We're all gonna die. We're all gonna die. We're all gonna die. Then boom, they all just show up. Like <laughs> uh, such a cool, such a cool page when the yeah. Neptunian turn up. Like that's such a cool, creative, fun idea. I love that. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's great stuff. Yeah, and I mean, I have my rankings of the arcs. I sent it to the Discord just now. Um. Well, I, a little while ago, but I can I can list them, or is that where we want to start? Or yeah, let's um let's pull those up here, um, so we can see how you rank them. Um, okay, so for your rankings as of uh, Reverse Mountain, so in order, you had uh, Arlong Park. Piratie, Logtown, Romance Dawn, Syrup Village, Orange Town, and Reverse Mountain. So I like Reverse Mountain, but at the end of the day, it's like four chapters. And it's like, besides Laboon being a Chad, it's like, yeah. <laughs> mm. It's like, it's not bad. A B is still a passing grade. Like, it is <laughs> It is perfectly cromulent, but everything else was just a little bit meatier. Um, so that's kind of where I end up with it. And we were we were on the same page. Uh, I think we we had it lower on our end as well. Um, so Evan had Arlong Park, Baratier, Log Town, Sir Village, Romance Dawn, Reverse Mountain, Orange Town, 
And then I had Ong Park, Baratier, Thirt Village, Logtown, Orangetown, Romance Dawn, and Reverse Mountain. So we all had it pretty close to the bottom, if not the bottom. Uh, again, like like you said, it's it's still a great arc, but I think in comparison to what we've had so far, it was a little bit less substantial. It's like, more you know, of a mini arc. Yeah. yeah. Um, there's some like really great moments still, and I I love the um introduction to the grand line and we kind of get like a roadmap to the one piece um but at the end of the day um yeah it's just a little bit i, I think it's just um there's a little bit less there story-wise it's it was a little bit more of like um like table setting yeah i agree okay uh with that being said let us get the ranking for whiskey peak so, Evan, uh, how about we start with you? Where would you place Whiskey Peak? Uh, Whiskey Peak, I think, also felt more of like a table setting arc just because the opponents weren't that strong. I mean, the biggest battle of that arc was Luffy versus Zoro. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. And, like... You know, they do face two Devil Fruit users, but they're both discarded with pretty quickly and pretty nonchalantly. Um, I don't know. I, I think that, like, we get a lot of um, introduction to the Baroque works and kind of how the Baroque works works. And, <laughs> um, you know, like, kind of everyone's rankings and the whole, like, breakdown of that system. Um, but as far as, like, actual battle goes, like, Zoro was a total badass and, like, mm. kicked a lot of ass. And I obviously love that. And, like, you know, I'll take Zoro kicking ass all day. But uh, I think overall it wasn't as strong of, like, a battle as, say, Baratier or Arlong. So I would rank it probably, like, A or B. I don't I have to pull up the standings again, but... I think I'd, I'd rank it on the lower end of what we've experienced so far. So probably, I don't know, either A rank or B rank. Okay, and where would you put it arc-wise? Um, I'll put it... I'm going to put it in B rank, but before Reverse Mountain. Okay. Okay, so your updated rankings would be Arlong Park, Barate, Logtown, Sir Village, Romance Dawn, Orange Town, Whiskey Peak, Reverse Mountain. Yeah. yeah I think I'm okay with that. Uh, okay, cool. Yeah, then, uh, Sean, let's get your um, your opinions. Uh, it's the same as Evans, essentially. Uh, I would put... Uh, I, I agree with him pretty much entirely about Whiskey Peak. Of it. It's like a fun slapstick arc, almost, in a way, with that added lore of Baroque works. But, like, there's no real... The threat, the biggest threat throughout all of Whiskey Peak is the no, is the what do they call the unluckies realizing unluckies. That, that like that's the scariest <laughs> moment. None of the things they fight are, are like of any real threat. Like, yeah. There's no the biggest fight is Luffy versus Zoro, and the biggest threat is the unluckies hearing uh, Vivi say crocodile. Um, I love Igaram. I love him in his hair. Um, <laughs> but I mean. What do they do, really? They, yeah. they just kind of... The character design's <laughs> up there. A plus. A plus yeah. stuff. But yeah, it's otherwise just kind of like... It's a pit stop, kind of. It's a, it's a slapstick pit stop, and let's we were, we're ready to keep going. Yeah, it feels like a setup for a later Baroque's arc that... A Baroque yeah. Works arc that would be maybe more substantial with some more serious players. Okay, so you had... Um, Arlong Park, Barate, Log Town, Orange Town, Sierra Village, Romance Dawn, Whiskey Peak, Reverse Mountain. Yep, I put it the same place as Evan did, a little bit above Reverse Mountain, um, just because it is a bit more substantial. Like, I think it's however many chapters versus that, but in the same rank as B, it's a B rank for me. Okay. Um, I'm actually right there with you guys. Um, so I'm, I'm going to put it in B rank, but I'm going to put it right before Reverse Mountain. 
Sorry, hold on. <laughs> Orange <laughs> Park, Parate, Syrup Village, Log Town, Orange Town, Romance Dawn, Whiskey Peak, Reverse Mountain. So, yeah, with Whiskey Peak, I do think there's some really great moments. I also think there's um, some lower moments as well. Um, to me, like the highlight is um, Zoro versus the 100 Bounty Hunters. Um, and like, like I was telling Evan like last week, like this is an episode of the anime where I could like point to somebody who hasn't seen it before and be like, I just want to see like a cool like Zoro like moment. Like, can you like show me something that like kind of shows like how Zoro is? And I'm like, yeah, this would be like the perfect like just one shot to show people mm-hmm. and then kind of get a taste for like who Zoro is. And I think um, like the action is really cool and like Zoro is really cool in general. Um, I love the setup for the Broke Works and getting more of the organization. Uh, the reveal with Vivi and Igram being from the Kingdom of Alabasta, um, the introduction to, um, you know, more members of Baroque Works. Uh, so all that stuff is, like, really great. Um, but then, like you guys were saying, like, the stakes also feel a bit low. Uh, like, Luffy versus Zoro. Um, like I was saying, like, it, it kind of makes sense within the context of the story, but at the same time, it also kind of goes against what we've seen with Luffy's character in the past and how he gives his crew the benefit of the doubt. So to me, I, I do feel like that's a little detraction. Um, it, it's it's just meant for like kind of for fun. It's not meant to be taken that seriously. It's obviously not like a fight where one was going to die. Um, so it's it's not meant to be like high stakes. But um, but at the same time, that makes like the whole fight of, of the the arc less substantial in that way. Um, and then there's also. Um, Again, like the emotional parts where like um, you know Igram gets blown up, so like you know that that that's part of it too. The introduction to um, this mysterious Miss All Sunday is pretty cool. Um, so overall, I, I do think there's some like really good stuff, but like compared to what we've seen so far, it's just um, it, it, like I was saying with Reverse Mountain, it does feel like table setting, and for this one too, um, like you guys were saying too. Um, yeah, so that that's where I I land on it for right now. So, yep, yeah, I'm with you. Yeah, I feel like, we, I don't know, I feel like we haven't had any, like, dud arcs yet, you know? Like, like this no. arc still brought a lot to the table, um, and there were some amazing moments. Uh, we haven't had any really, like, clearly bad arcs that I would, you know, just kind of, like, dismiss. Yeah, I feel like everything has been pretty solid so far. Now, I might have an unpopular opinion, but I don't think there is a bad arc in One Piece. You, I remember you saying this in the start. I do disagree, but it's going to be a while before we get one I consider like legit bad. And for what it's worth, there's like a handful. There's like two or three at most for me. Yeah, there's just like a, a lot of like high moments in the series, and like I love everything in this series. Yeah. Uh, but to me, like you know, there's comparatively like lower moments. Like what I'm saying here, again, not saying anything that we've encountered so far is is bad. I think everything is great. It's just like something has to be like lower on the tier list, you know, just by nature of it. If we're going to be ranking something, you have to put something at the bottom. Totally. Yeah, I'm I'm really enjoying this series. And I, I kind of mentioned it earlier, I think that like um, post East Blue, where like, like I was saying, all the, all the characters are established. It's really like satisfying at this point in the stage, where like we're at the Grand Line. Like we have a ship, we have an established crew. Everyone has their like things and their characteristics that are in play. And just kind of like seeing this crew working together has been really great, like through Baroque yeah. Works. And I'm just like really enjoying where the series is and where it's going um, and kind of like the dynamic that's building amongst the crew and how the world is building. I'm just like really enjoying the writing and illustration on a whole. Yeah. And like to compare it to like Marvel movies, like we're at the point where it's like, we're past like their origin story. Like a lot of like, yes. the first movies are like introducing the character, how they got their powers, blah, blah, blah. Right. And then when you get um, like past that, you get to like, a sequel. It's like, all right, we already know who this character is. We can get right into like a new story. Right. So it feels like we're kind of like, at that stage. We're past the origin stories and we're now like, everybody's like, established and we can just tell stories with these characters. Totally. Uh, we can start establishing other characters and like those pieces, but we're not like trying to set up like, like a whole world and we're not trying to set up like, um, like our main crew like all from the beginning. So we're, we're at a point where we can kind of just get like stories about these characters. Totally. And I think broke works is working as like a good sort of like enemy construct. Cause it's kind of like a layered mysterious, but also like very regimented and like, you know, 
you have they're literally numbered in yeah. like <laughs> their rank. So it's literally like five, four, three, two, one, zero. Um, so I, I think that like just assuming we're probably going to see these characters in that order as we work our way up to uh, uh, Sir Crocodile and that boss battle, which I'm pretty excited for. I and mean, we we haven't even seen we've heard Sir Crocodile, but we have not seen a uh, we have no image for this villain yet. Is there there, we got a little silhouette, but yeah, we, we got a classic Oda silhouette. Yeah, a silhouette. Um, we did get a silhouette. That's right. Yeah, but not very, much. very minimal. Yeah. Not much. Mu- not much to go off of. Right. Uh, but yeah, like it's also interesting to note here that like they set this like villain organization up, um, and we've already gone through like like two arcs where we've like been introduced to them, and we have not resolved that story yet. Yeah. So I, I think we get, we're getting a sense that this is building to something bigger and it's not going to be something that's going to just immediately going to be resolved. So, uh, I mean, if you look at the the spines, you know, broke works goes on for a little while. Uh, so just kind of give you an indication, like, you know, this is bigger than what it might seem. So stay tuned. Yeah. Stay tuned on the next in that channel. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, any closing thoughts before we wrap up? Uh, I can't wait, wait to see Luffy fighting a giant. I'm excited for that. <laughs> well, hopefully you have to wait too long. No, I don't think we will. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, I think that's going to do it for this week's episode. Uh, you can find this episode wherever podcasts are found at wearereadingonepiece.buzzsprout.com or on our YouTube channel at We Are Reading One Piece. This is a spoiler-free channel up to where we've recorded the podcast so far. So if you're new to the series, you can visit the channel there. Uh, you can also find me and this podcast on my YouTube channel at Parking Codex for various One Piece content. Uh, but next week, we will be discussing Volume 14, Instinct. I've been Joel, and I've been joined by my co-host, Sean. This is Sean. And Evan. Hey, guys. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. <laughs> All right, thanks. Uh, thanks for listening, and be sure to bring along all of your hopes and dreams. And we'll see you in the next episode. Me 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 me. <laughs> <laughs>